Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And, and this, this is, is The Insider, Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hey, yeah, got another week by. I know, yeah, no, it's just it's been such a such a busy start of 2024. It feels like it's like I, I never have free time on the weekends. It's been anymore. ridiculously busy. Uh, yeah, so yeah. what did you guys end up doing this last week? Oh gosh, we finally got a set piece that uh, we would borrowed from somebody for Venus and fur way back in July back to its owner in the valley. Oh, okay. So we had this divan that we'd uh, borrowed, this like ornate pink thing. And it had been living in our living room, our very small living room, taking up space since July. Okay. <laughs> we just like never had like a good opportunity to connect with this person, get it back to them. We don't have a truck. So like we were trying to see if we could borrow a truck. It just wasn't working out timing wise. And so we did the thing we did the last time. And we rented a U-Haul for oh, geez, <laughs> just get rid of it finally. Like, I, but oh my gosh, there's so much room for activities now. <laughs> in my right on. She did but, a little travel in there. Yeah, yeah. Mission accomplished. And I think we picked like the best day for the drive too on Saturday when the weather was just really nice. Like from Brookings all the way to Medford, it was just gorgeous. Right on. Yeah, yeah. good dude. Yeah, because it was Warm crazy day over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The weather's been going funky all over the place. You wake up one day and it's like. Sunshine, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's like, bam, yeah, slam down with the rain. So it's been so crazy. Right for around here, yeah. <laughs> but it is Oregon. They told us, you know, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. So, yeah, you moved here, you, you knew you were dealing with that right next to the ocean and all the good stuff. So. That's all I've ever known. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, Junior, man, I mean, that little boy just did his tonsils and adenoids. We go through that. And then all of a sudden, uh, this last he gets one week into school, four days, I think, and then he got off. We went and got a good report from the doctor. Mm -hmm. I talked about that last Monday. So he's at school last Monday when we're taping, right? Go home, get him. Man, he starts coughing at the nighttime, you know, and wouldn't, I mean, a hardcore cough and stuff. And in the, all day in the morning and everything. So I ended up keeping him home, you know, because I'm not one of them parents that mm -hmm. puts a kid in school when he's doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, he's coughing. <laughs> and that night, you know, it's a Tuesday, he's coughing. And that night, he's like doing all right. And, uh, you know, um, sleep's all good. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, it was just something went through. Man, he woke up next morning coughing, and he did coughing all nonstop Wednesday, man. I mean, where he was looking at me going, Baba, I'm going insane with all this coughing. And I was like, okay, boom. So the next morning, Thursday morning, you know, he went through that night. And I just like, yeah, took an emergency room. And they hooked him up. And Well, I talked to one of the other mothers, and she said that uh, her son had just went through it. And what she did, she just went automatically there to the emergency room. And I was like, okay, we're going. And they gave, you know, they hooked him up and did some saline and did some blood things. And I ended up getting that RSV stuff that's going around. Mm. The weirdest thing. And my mom back in Utah, I sit there and I didn't even tell her what he, I just said he went through a little bout of something. She goes, is that RSV? And I'm like going, how the heck did you know about, you know? They're having a big epidemic going yeah. in Utah, right? I guess the really stuff is making us world round going around here, you know? So anyways, that's what we got to deal with. So another week out of school with this kid and he's doing all right now and everything I got. But my gosh, man, it's been like this beginning, you know, because he went and had his tonsils on January 10th. So it's like it's been a ever saga. since then, it's just been like hectic city, man. But it's all right. We're getting through it. It's cool. Yeah. I'm sitting almost looking forward to the event season coming so I get sidetracked on my events again. Right, right. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, I want to talk about a festival. So, yeah, we just tonsils. healed up. This, we just was healing up and hanging out and being cool this weekend, man. That's what we did, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, but next week's going to be the Super Bowl weekend. So, that's going to mm -hmm. be cool, man. Good deal. That's going to be some fun times. But, hey, so hope everybody got out there and had some fun this weekend. And, uh, yeah, did something. We got more things coming. We'll be talking about it. We also do have guests in the house, but. First, we'd like to thank Trike City Dispensary, the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows here at KCIW, just go to kciw.org and you will be on your merry way. Now, Kat, I'm going to turn it over to you because this is something you guys are doing at Three Penny. So, a, yeah, yeah, I'm going to let you take it away with who our guests are and uh, introduce and all that right. good stuff. I'm quite familiar with the two people in the room yes. with us today. We're here with Lori Pepsis and Mike Vest. They are our cast, the whole cast for the upcoming production. <laughs> the cast. <laughs> opening this weekend of Love Letters presented by Three Penny Theater Co. 
Lori, how are you doing today? I am good this morning. Happy to be here. All right, Mike, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good to see you again. Good to see you again, Bruce, yes, too. Sir. Always a pleasure. Or should I say, R. <laughs> My pirate friend, Bruce. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, me and Mike, just like you said, we did a lot of plays together, too. So plays, there we go. Yeah, pirate yeah. stuff. Yeah, and yeah. had uh, fun with Bruce here for, oh, decades. Yes, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Lori and Mike both have quite the uh, background in theater and they've mm -hmm. done either teaching or just regional theater and just you guys have experience that I can't even like, I wish I had that kind of experience. You will. You will. You, you will get older and you will. <laughs> That's a thing with age. <laughs> in this play, this play is a little unique. Why don't you tell me, Lori, a little bit what Love Letters is about? Love Letters is a fascinating piece of theater um, that I was not familiar with until um, it came Three Penny Theater Company way. Um, it is a red piece, which is um, unusual for a theater piece. The actors must carry the story um, in that fashion. Uh, there's no singing, dancing, moving, set changes. It's uh, quite unique and um, uh, a really, I always use the word, an, an enchanting story to um, follow a friendship um, and many of the listeners will relate to this, um, that, that lasts over 50 years. Um, these characters meet, we uh, find out through the script when they are in second grade, and the script picks up when they're about 10 years old. Um, so uh, very different and, and have been quite, has been quite challenging because of that. Nothing many to years. hide behind here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're portraying a lifetime. So right. yeah, yeah, people change over time too, and and it's been interesting seeing you two rehearse and seeing the characters' personalities develop over that time period. Right, Mike, what's it been like playing Andy? Is the character that you play? It, it's been uh, challenging in a, in a sense where um, diction, inflections. Uh, pronunciation of certain words. I'm still struggling at this point on uh, <laughs> some words. Uh, particularly has uh, been a difficult uh, constituents. Uh, did I get that right, Lord? You got it. You got, it. You, you, you got the for the so, second um, syllable. <laughs> and I, I, I compare it almost a lot like almost like trying to uh, read an audio book or something where you have to do all the uh, inflection and stuff in, in, but doing it in a letter writing form, it, it's it's uh, challenging in its unique ways, but uh, also a, a very lovely piece too. I I really have enjoyed doing this, uh, especially because there aren't things like in addition to delivering uh, the lines. You've got to think, okay, I have to be downstage, upstage. I have to be doing this. And, you know, there's a lot of mechanics in theater that we don't have to do in this piece, mm -hmm. and so it just makes it much more in, engaging. Mm -hmm. You, uh, the the audience could come in and sit and close their eyes, and listen to this whole production mm -hmm. and walk away with it as just as much as watching us do it. So. Right. It's fun that way. Yeah, yeah, intensely, really intensely character driven for sure. Yes. it's a play made for radio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I just it blows my mind just the two you know actors, just two actors. I, 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 I don't think there's many plays out there like right. that, but I can see where yeah, it not a headache yet could be a headache, but not really much of it. You know, yeah. it's like you don't have all the no. It's just like the set stays everything. Right. Yeah. So it's more focused on the story, and it makes it exactly. scary as, as an actor. It does make right. it. It is challenging. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a little scary and exciting. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, it takes strong actors to pull off something that is uh, right. that, that story and character driven. That you don't have set pieces to hide behind. And, and it's been great watching you guys do this and grow together. And you guys are definitely more than capable of handling this material. Oh, thank you for this. Kind of very you. excited to oh, see yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you're getting to see it right there. Yeah, going yeah. Right. Jason is uh, directing yeah, it, right? Directed that, that's, by, that's right. That's very directed cool. by Jason. Yeah. He's, and uh, he's, he's been really fun as a, a director because it's, it's a challenge for him because you know, he's directed many projects, but it's they've been full stage productions. And he sits in the, he, and he just kind of listens to us because that's all he really can do. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, the advice and some uh, some of the ways that he has said, well, maybe if you uh, say this this way or something, mm -hmm. there might be a more of an impact. 
And uh, I've really found Jason to be just a really good director to work under. I, I can dig it. I can see where he's, because I've directed myself before, and I, and I see that where he would be, it would be, it's almost, it's too simple. There's got to be some, you know, you, you, am I overthinking this or am I not? Or am I, am I, you know, I can see it. It's ridiculous. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. It sounds like a really great play, man. You know, that's yeah. Um, well, and I could sit here talking about it forever, yes, but you've yeah. got to get into some other events right. happening in the area. Yeah, so why, don't, else, no yeah, else, yeah. why don't we? Why don't one of you tell us where we can find tickets for that? When's it happening? What's the details there? I'll let Lori do all those where, what's, and when's and stuff because you're going to see. I, you're going to hear me get it wrong. Um, <laughs> The beauty of the uh, the productions um, uh, performances is that it is uh, either we, uh, the weekends either side of Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is on a Wednesday. Uh, we open this Friday on the ninth. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday matinee, and then the weekend after Valentine's Day, which those dates will escape me right now. Mm-hmm. Um, also Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday matinee, and uh, and you don't have to bring you know you don't. Just bring your friend, bring your mom. This is one of those that the script itself is just absolutely accessible to everyone. Mm-hmm. And of course, tickets are available at uh, threepennytheater.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, doors open 30 minutes before performance. If uh, they're not sold out, you can uh, see if you can get them there as well. So, uh, and that is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Fridays and Saturdays. It starts at 7, Sunday matinee starts at 2 p.m. And with such a limited uh, seating capacity, the intimacy of this piece is really going to carry. I, I'm very excited. Right on. Mm-hmm. Well, we look forward to it. That's great. Well, God, having y'all come over and talk and everything, and we got to get on with the rest of the show here. Yeah, <laughs> right. Thank you. It's been so such a nice conversation. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, check out Love Letters. That's right. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cool deal. All right. Well, that was great. You know, it was fun having uh, them on board here for that. And uh, Love Legend it sounds like it's going to be a really great play. So uh, we got to get some music going on yeah, here. Oh, gee, yeah. <laughs> that, there's still music happening this yeah. month. Uh, so let's start at Misty Mountain Brewing. Music there runs from 6 to 8 p.m. On the 9th, it's Steve Nelson. The 16th, Lon Goddard. And then on the 23rd, P.A. and T. Roy. Yeah. And then we got Cisco and Daltrey there on the 10th. They'll be at the Checo Grange at 11 a.m. to 1.30. And then Cisco's doing the solo thing at the Brigham's Harbor Farmer Market on the 17th and the 24th, and those times are 11 to 2. And then we've got a personal schedule here for Long Goddard. He's playing on the 7th and the 21st at Kuntai, music there running from 6 to 8. On the 10th, he'll be at the Democrats' headquarters for the second Saturday Art Walk. That's from 3 to 6. And then on the 17th, you're going to see him at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant from 6 to 8. Yep, and then we got, like I said, repeat here, a Tutuga Mexican restaurant on the 9th. We'll have Daniel Duran and Ohana at 6 to 8. And then once again, on the 17th, Lon Goddard, 6 to 8. And then we have a couple dates here for PA and T-Roy. They're playing on the 10th at Kuntai again, 6 to 8 p.m. And then on the 23rd, they'll be at Misty Mountain from 6 to 8. Yep, and then Mike Powell, you'll catch him on the 9th and the 10th at Elk Valley Casino, 7 to 10. And then on the 16th, he'll be at Checo Brewing Company, 6 to 8. All right, and then at the Inateca in Crescent City, on the 24th, the Shark Tones will be playing from 8 to 10. Yep, and then you got the Italian guys on the 16th and 23rd. They'll be at Kuntai, 6 p.m. And Danielle Duran and Ohana, again, are playing on the 9th at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant. Again, that's 6 to 8. And then on Tuesdays, they're at Oxenfree from 8 to 11. And on Thursdays, they're at Chaco Brewing Co. from 5 to 8. Yeah, I believe those are the open mic. Those are open mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. (laughs) Hey, and the Elk Valley Casino at the Betty Green Center, they're featuring on the 17th. Comedian Tom Rhodes, opening act will be Michael Cordova. Doors open at 7.30, shows at 8. On the 24th, we got Unchained, a tribute to Van Halen. Doors open at 7, shows at 8. And then the Warriors Bar and Grill, they've got on the 9th and 10th, with Mike Powell from 7 to 10. On the 14th, Valentine's Day, we've got Steve Berg, 6 to 9. On the 16th and 17th, we've got Jesse Mead, 7 to 10. And on the 23rd and the 24th, we've got Steve Nelson, 7 to 10. And then just another reminder here, the Shark Tones are playing once again on the 24th at Inateca from 8 to 10. The Shark Tones, yeah. Right. Bringing yeah. the beach music. Blaze through that music schedule there. We did. And Dwok is presenting Birds of the South Coast. This is happening on the 8th from noon to 1. Southwestern Oregon Community College Curry Campus is inviting the community to join them at this special program. This presentation will be given by Tom Bozak, a retired aerospace engineer who moved to Brookings with his wife Linda in 2007. His interest in photography began as a youth living in central Michigan. He has owned several 35mm cameras over the years before switching to digital in 1999. 
He photographs whatever seems interesting, including wildlife, sunsets, waves, buildings, insects, and of course, birds. More recently, he has photographed birds that he and Linda see on their daily walks, especially at the port of Brookings Harbor. And then Ann Villasis, president of the Calmeopsis Audubon Society, which is Curry County's locally based bird and wildlife habitat conservation group, will also speak. A lifelong bird and nature enthusiast, Ann will talk about our distinctive South Coast birds and ways to see and enjoy them. And for more information, you can contact the Curry campus at 541 541- 813-1667. That's right. And Forecastle Books is presenting the Spoken Word Open Mic. This is happening on the 8th, 5.45 p.m. It's original poetry from local poets hosted by Michael Spring. For more info or to participate, you can call 541-450-1115. And the Rice Bowl down at 16215 West Hoffelt Way in Harbor is presenting Gu Zhang live performance by Serafina Huang. This is a journey of Chinese music and poetry celebrating the Lunar New Year. And this is happening on the 10th of February. There's going to be a total of four shows that day running between noon all the way up to 9 p.m. For more information, and they do say make a reservation, you can call 541-469-7058. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Hey, Brookings Elks Lodge is presenting Denim and Diamonds. This is happening on the 10th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's a silent live auction, live band, dinner and dessert, proceeds to benefit Elk Scholarships. Tickets are 60 bucks. For questions and tickets, you can call 541-469-2169. And I also found out they are doing businesses and stuff like I think that's like $500 table. You got eight people. I believe that's oh, okay. uh, all right. So there is a, you can well. get your business in there if you want to, right. too. Yeah. All right. There you go. Mm-hmm. And then also coming up at the Brookings Elks Lodge, a Valentine's Day dinner. And this is, of course, on Valentine's Day, the 14th. And they say you can reserve your time of choice. You can reserve at 4, 530 or 7 p.m. And this is a five course meal prepared by Chef James. You've got filet of shrimp scampi or scallops, chicken cordon bleu, pasta primavera soup or salad, and dessert, all for $42. To make reservations, you can call Cheryl at 541-469-2169. Yeah, and then the Chat Co. Activity Center is having a Valentine's Day fundraiser. It's takeout only. It's a lamb dinner for two. This is happening on the 14th. You pick up between 1230 and 2 p.m. It's featuring roast lamb, scout potatoes, vegetable, and dessert. There's a limited quantity, so make sure to reserve by Tuesday the 13th. You can call 541 469 Six eight two two. Cool. All right. Now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Hey, you know what? Here are a few quotes from the mother of the civil rights movement, Rosa Parks, and she was born on February 4th, 1913. She says, I would like to be remembered as a person who wanted to be free so other people would also be free. She goes, each person must live their life as a model for others. And you must never be fearful about what you are doing when it is right. And last but not least, she says, stand for something or you will fall for anything. Today's mighty oak is yesterday's nut that held its ground. (coughs) Hope you enjoy this week's quotes from Rosa Parks with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. She certainly knew how to stand her ground. She did. (laughs) All right. Well, we'd spent a good deal of time talking about this, so we'll just go over the details real quick here. Three Penny Theater Co. is presenting Love Letters by A.R. Gurney. And this is happening at the Brookings Event Center. That's 800 Checo Avenue, Unit B in Brookings. The show run for this romantic comedy is February 9th through 18th. Friday and Saturday shows at 7 p.m. Sunday matinees at 2 p.m. Doors open 30 minutes before showtime. Starring veteran actors Lori Pepsis and Mike Vest, directed by Three Penny founder Jason Liddell. Tickets are $15. There are discounts for seniors, students, and veterans as well. Are you looking for a Valentine's Day weekend to remember? They're also offering date night packages for couples featuring shareable sweet and sparkling treats. And you can learn more about the show and buy tickets in advance at threepennytheater.com. For more information, call 541-251-0640 or send a message to contact at threepennytheater.com. This indeed sounds like a good one. Hey. Hey, the Del Norte Association for Cultural Awareness is presenting Twin Flames. This is going to be at the Betty Green Center at the Elk Valley Casino on the 16th, 6 p.m., Tanaka invites you to Ready to Ignite Sparks and Witness the Magic and Love of the Twin Fames is a musical combination of indigenous and Western melodies for the fourth concert of their 23-24 performance series. Delighted to host award-winning duo Twin Flames who create sonic soundscapes with spirits, flutes, traditional drums, and Western instruments. The result is a warm, perfect blend of sounds 
They offer a memorable show with their blend of music, comedy, and thought-provoking stories. Tickets are now available online at Danaka.eventbrite.com and at Del Norte Office Supply in Crescent City. And if they have any tickets left over, they will be available at the door. Box office opens 545, shows at 6. All right. And then we have some events here from the Curry Public Library up in Gold Beach. Their first event is Connect Your Phone to Wi-Fi on the 8th. That's from noon to 1. Participants are encouraged to bring a device if they've got one, like your smartphone, tablet, or laptop. You'll get hands-on support from library staff. And if you attend three or more of this series of Stay Connected programs, you can claim a prize. Mm-hmm. And then a second up, they have Create Your Jewelry on the 10th of February from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Discover the art of laser engraving to create unique acrylic jewelry pieces, including custom earrings, necklaces, and brooches. And they ask that you RSVP for that at currypubliclibrary.org. And this is an event that is mostly geared toward adults. And then the Friends of the Curry Public Library are having their book and bake sale on the 16th. Uh, Friday, February 16th from 4 to 6, it's Friends Members Only. You can also join at the sale for $10 a year. And then on Saturday the 17th, the hours are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. On Sunday the 18th, noon to 4 p.m. And then on Monday the 19th, it's 10 a.m. to noon for their $2 bag sale. Then coming up on the 24th, they're having a Design Your Dragon event from 10 a.m. to noon. You can explore the process of designing and printing an articulated 3D dragon. And then there will be follow-up sessions to create your own dragon if they're available. Again, you can RSVP for that at currypubliclibrary.org. And then rounding out the month here on the 27th from noon to 1 p.m., they have set your phone for easy use. You can learn how to use accessibility features to make using your phone easier. This program will cover how to control your phone with your voice, have your phone read the screen to you, adjust text size and appearance, screen magnification, and much more. Yes, indeed. And hey, the 17th Annual Winter Art and Chocolate Festival is coming to the Brookings Harbor High School cafeteria once again on the 17th and the 18th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. 17 years and running, the Winter Art and Chocolate Festival brings together local and regional artists, chocolate makers, and the great citizens of Southern Oregon for one of the area's most tempting festival. You got all kinds of stuff in there. (laughs) And then the Lucky 7 Casino is presenting Dylan Schneider on the 18th at 8 p.m., and Dylan is country music's is a country music star. He's toured with artists such as Morgan Wallen, Dan and Shay, Florida Georgia Line, Kane Brown, and many more. A country singer and songwriter who merges a modern pop sensibility with a down home feel. The doors for this show open at 7 p.m. Show begins at 8. Tickets are available at eventbrite.com or at the door. And because this is a casino event, you have to be 21 years or older to attend. Yeah, sounds like a regular phenom there or whatever they call that. Yeah. Hey, Tortuga Mexican Restaurant, located 28788 Hunter Creek Loop in Gold Beach, is presenting The Ghost of Brian Craig. This is happening on the 23rd, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Immerse yourself in the magic of music at their upcoming enchanting event, showcasing the talent of solo acoustic rock artist Ghost of Brian Craig. Brian graces the stage, armed only with his acoustic guitar and harmonica, offering a distinctive musical journey. They recommend reservations. You can call 541-701-9502. And then the Elk Valley Casino is presenting Unchained, a Van Halen tribute at the Betty Green Center on the 24th at 8 p.m. The concert will feature some of Van Halen's greatest hits, including Running with the Devil, Ain't Talking About Love, Dance the Night Away, Panama, Jump, Hot for Teacher, The Cradle Will Rock, Eruption, and many more. And tickets are available at etix.com and at the casino. Doors open 7 p.m. with the show starting at 8, and it's a casino. Got to be 21 or older to attend. That's right. Hey, and the Brookings Harbor Garden Club is presenting the first annual Scion Day and Grafting Demonstration presented by John Savage at the Checo Community Library. This is happening on the 26th, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Open to the public from beginner to experienced. All are welcome. Don't have Scions? Well, come see what they are starting anyways. Come learn about grafting, and you can participate by bringing the scions of healthy fruit trees such as apple, pear, or cherry, any fruit tree. Bring gallon Ziploc bags, tape, and a permanent marker. And you can contact John if you need to know how to harvest your scions to bring to the class. He will instruct you via email. So go John, S-A-V at charter.net. And he says, sharpen up your grafting knife and create your own Franken tree. Okay. All right. Now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right. Good day, cat. Good day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know 
A British Army officer during World War II was known for going into battle with a longbow, a broadsword, and his bagpipes? It's true! And here's the story of Mad Jack Churchill. He participated in a number of raids throughout the war, including one in Norway where he jumped off the landing craft playing March of the Cameron Men on his bagpipes before throwing a grenade and charging into battle. In 1944, he was captured in Yugoslavia after the rest of his command was injured or killed by mortar fire. And as the last man standing, Churchill played, Will ye no come back again? on his bagpipes before being knocked unconscious by a grenade. He was taken to Sakonusen concentration camp, but escaped along with a Royal Air Force officer shortly after. Both of them were recaptured and remained at the camp until the next year, when German soldiers overthrew the SS and released the prisoners at the camp. Well, after the war, Churchill retired and appeared as an extra in the 1952 movie Ivanhoe. <coughs> Hope you enjoyed this week's Bitter Weird History with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. He ends up getting a, a movie gig out of the deal. How I mean, cool is like, that? hey. Yeah. I, I mean, you imagine, it. though. Yeah. <laughs> That's like that movie, The Rundown, where the guy, he's got them bagpipes going up. You've seen the movie with the, the rock. Oh, okay. Well, he's coming down the thing, right? Uh, getting ready to go into battle, you know, with the bad guys. And he's playing his bagpipes coming down the middle. And I could just, yeah, yeah see this guy jumping off and playing the bagpipes. Yeah. Metal. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. All right. Well, we got time for another ongoing event here from Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. They have an ongoing thing called Memory Cafe Curry. They meet the third Wednesday of every month from 1030 to noon at the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. And to register for the program, they ask that you email memorycafe at cplib.net or call 541-247-7246. A Memory Cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include, but are not limited to, spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory Cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in the similar situation. Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by qualified social service providers, library staff, and volunteers. That's right. It's so funny how we both like kind of speeded it up a little bit because we had too much fun with our guests. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't happen too often, but we had some fun with our so guests. That's where it took a while. I mean, it was interesting. You know, I mean, we could have talked the whole show over like that, but we managed to get all the dates in and everything that we could we possibly get in. Yeah. So that's it. So, hey. Time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows they have to offer. You can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, KCIW.org. And while you're there, hey, check out the live streaming as well. Well, until next week, uh, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. We're signing off. Uh, keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll, we'll see, see you out there. there. Bam! All right. We did it. We did it. Yeah, we were having a little bit of fun there with you guys. That was cool. I was looking at the time I'm going. How many minutes did we say? Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.